Today, we're going to talk about privilege. And uh, we're going to talk about it in terms of this, this idea that some people are privileged and that as a result of some people being privileged and having a better chance at achieving certain things, that either other people need to be brought up to the level of the privileged person or the privileged person needs to be brought down to the level of the person that is not privileged. This seems kind of strange to me. And you might be thinking, well, here's here's a guy that is a businessman. He's had a little bit of success and he's white and he's tall and he's healthy and he has a great wife and great daughter and grandkids and a great business with great people he works with and for. And it's just, he's got it going on and he's so privileged. And of course, I'm going to think privilege is an okay thing. And maybe you're thinking that, I don't know. But I hope to kind of explain why I don't think that's very accurate reasoning. First, I'll tell you a little bit about me. I was reared in the back hills of Tennessee in a Mennonite community. And for many years, we didn't have electricity or running water. Uh, There was no father in the picture. It was my mother and me. And I certainly wasn't raised, reared in the the lap of luxury. We frequently didn't have a car. Uh, My mother was on food stamps a good bit of the time. Sometimes she would have a part-time job or a full-time job for a little while, but she was kind of a rolling stone and so would go back and forth between that and being on welfare. And I'd ride a horse to school, which is kind of neat. Not everybody gets to do that. But for some years, I rode a horse to the little one-room Christian school. And we were kind of shunned in the Mennonite community because my mother was still you know, she came from a worldly background, so she didn't fit in perfectly. And we were never really accepted in that community. She had hoped that there would be a, a father figure type person that would kind of take me under his wing and and help me grow to be a man and teach me all the things a father would teach a son. And that never happened. So I was reared in abject poverty in the Appalachian Mountains, way back in the middle of nowhere. Didn't really have a lot of privilege at that point, did I? I I was white, a male, but that sure didn't give me much privilege. And I look now at all the people that were reared in a similar environment who haven't made things of themselves, haven't, haven't had accomplishments, aren't happily married and don't have a lot of friends and, and have some financial success. And, and were they less or more privileged than I was at that moment? I worked really hard for a lot of years. I put myself in situations where luck was likely to happen, where I would meet the right people who would hire me or uh, work beside me. And And I made so many mistakes. I would try this and try that and fail and get up and try again and do it again and and just work, work, work and grind. So from the time I really started working at, I think, age 13 or 14 until now, I'm in my late 40s, I've put in eh, 30-something years of work at this point. Uh, I've produced 30 years worth of value to the world. And I wouldn't even say all of it was value. There were there were years, there were months, days that what I produced wasn't really of much value to anybody. I recall one business I started uh, lasted about 10 months. Oh, did I ever fail that thing? I wasted so much of our family's money on that gamble, thinking that business would work. Oh, it's just, oh, I look back at that. And on the one hand, I'm really embarrassed at such a failure. And on the other hand, I learned so much from that experience that that I'm okay with it. But I've certainly fallen. I've certainly got back up. And and so have you, right? You haven't just had this perfect uh, golden path laid out in front of you. Are you privileged? Am I privileged? What does this term really mean? I I don't think I, I really get it. I think it might be a term that's used by people who didn't 
have success, either through luck or hard work or a combination of those things. I think it might be something that the people that haven't had this success now look back and use as an excuse. Oh, well, you know, there's no way I could have been a basketball star. I was only six foot two. I didn't have the privilege of the seven foot tall person. Uh, or, or, well, of course I don't, uh, you know, make a lot of money singing. I've got just, my voice has never been quite as good as the, the pop stars that are making millions and millions of dollars. And I just wasn't as privileged as they were. Hmm. What do you think? Do you think maybe the reason that I am not a famous basketball player, I'm six foot two, I think maybe the reason I'm not a famous basketball player is that I didn't grind at it, that I didn't think about where to put myself in the right places. I would have had a little bit tougher time as a, as a white guy because, you know, I think you, in certain fields, there are people that have a little bit of an edge. You know, if you walk into a Rotary Club meeting in many places in the country, and you want to have everybody greet you as this visitor from a Rotary Club in another town. If you're white, yeah, you're probably going to get more friends. There's still some racism going on in the, in the world, and it sucks. But yeah, I'd say you'd be a little bit behind there. But if I was trying to get a job as a professional basketball player, I think I'd have something to prove. I'd be like, wait a minute, you're not really the color of the, the majority of the people that do really well at this. I'd have to prove myself. So some could say that I'd be coming from, from behind and I'd be trying to play catch up in order to be a basketball player. But that's okay. I, I get to go to the Rotary Club meeting and have somebody actually come up and talk to me afterwards. I'm a little bit ahead there. And then in another way, I'm not going to be as far ahead. I, I can't be a jockey because I'm just was born too big of a person. I'm just not small enough to be a jockey and that's okay. These few examples that I'm giving kind of makes me think of the example, maybe you've seen this video of a college professor in a classroom and he's up at the front of the classroom and he looks out at everybody and they're, they're sitting in the rows and he puts a trash can right beside him at the very front of the room and right in front of the old chalkboard. And he asks everybody to take a piece of paper and wad it up and throw it into the trash can. Well, guess who gets more, more of their uh, watered up pieces of paper in the trash can? The people in the front row. And the people sitting way back in the back row, they don't have that success. And so the point of this exercise is supposed to be some people are privileged. They happen to land in the front row. And if you're in the front row, it makes it easier to do something. And the person sitting five rows behind you, they might not be lousier at throwing. They might not wad up their piece of paper more poorly. They just didn't have the privilege that you had being at the front of the classroom. Yeah, kind of a powerful little example the professor makes, right? Unless you're a person trained in logic and reason and critical thinking, it could at first seem like that makes good sense. You see the problem though? Life isn't a single goal, zero sum game. We're not all trying to get a piece of paper into a trash can at the front of the classroom. We're complex people. We have different wants and needs and desires. Some people want to be the first to walk out of the classroom at the end of the class. Well, the person in the back row would be privileged if that was their goal. They would have the first opportunity to get there. If somebody wanted to be out of view of the professor, maybe the person in the back left or right of the room, they would have the privileged position if that was their goal. The same is true in life. Not everybody wants to be a successful business person. Not everybody wants to be a successful jockey or basketball player. We all have different desires. There are different trash cans. The world is full of so many goals. There's so many goals that we can all achieve. And there are some goals that are way tougher. Like the fact that I have almost zero athletic ability, almost, well, no, I'm not going to say almost, that would be exaggerating and, and making myself look good. I have zero musical ability. I could not carry a tune. So for me to think that at almost 50 years old, 
I'm ever going to be a famous singer? I don't know. I think my probability is pretty low. If I was going to do that, I would certainly have to work much harder. I would have to practice instead of the typical 12 hours a day or whatever a, a person that masters something does, I would have to spend a lot more time than that and spend a lot of money on good coaches. And I suspect that even then I wouldn't do a very good job. I, I still wouldn't be a famous singer. I don't think I'll ever be a famous basketball player. I think there are a lot of things in life that I'm not going to achieve. There are a lot of goals or waste paper baskets that, that I'm not going to end up being able to throw a wadded piece of paper into, but that's okay. There are so many other opportunities and options. And so from my perspective, I'm okay with all of us being privileged in different ways. I'm really okay that I never had the opportunity to be a famous jockey. I don't feel that I was shorted. <laughs> Get it? I don't feel that I was shorted that I can't do that job because I'm a big guy. It's, it's just how the cookie crumbles. It's okay. I, I can either complain about it and mope, and I can ask for, for there to be different rules and for handicaps for heavier, taller jockeys, uh, or make other jockeys wear heavy weights on their back. I, I could do that. I could make everybody try to feel, try to make everybody feel guilty. I could complain and I could whine and I could excuse away what's going on. Or I could just say, eh, <laughs> that's one of the billions of waste paper baskets that I'm not going to be able to throw up a wadded piece of paper into. Eh, I'm probably not going to be able to do that one. So I'm going to find something else that I love and that I'm good at and that I can focus on and that I can do. Am I just being too positive here? Am I being too optimistic that, that you and my grandchildren and other people have the ability to find a thing that is right for them? Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm naive. Maybe I'm too optimistic. I just, I really believe that we all have an opportunity to get pretty far along the path of what we want. If we go for it, we work hard, put ourselves in positions to get lucky and charge forward. Am I off base? You tell me. Thank you for pondering this with me. If you're interested in sharing your thoughts, they're your personal thoughts. No need to. But if, it, if you think that some of your thoughts would be helpful or unique or whether they're agreeing with what I say or disagreeing, I'd love it if, you'd, if you're willing to, to share them uh, below. And uh, maybe other people can benefit from them. And maybe you can show me where I'm off base or it'll jog something in someone else's brain and they can tell me where I'm off base. And we can all think about this and come to good conclusions. Thank you again for spending your valuable time with me. And I'd sure love it if you'd subscribe.